Hi, my name is Pam, and my son struggles with addiction. From the time I carried Brian in my womb in my pregnancy, he was just spirited. And uh, from the time he was born, I knew that he was different. Uh, mother just knows these things. So we uh, you know, sought the help of pediatricians. And by the time he was two and a half years old, he was in a preschool kindergarten for children with behavioral issues and learning disabilities. They really helped us to learn how to, to manage our household better and to be able to bring some structure and peace into our home because it was, it, was, it, was, it was hard. He loved his first two years at, at uh, this Christian middle school, and he did really well and flourished there and was very happy there. And then he, you know, just got into a bully situation that uh, really um, would change the course of his life. And we really tried to walk through that with him. And then at that point, he started to choose. It, it, was, it was as if his, his the whole faith thing and walking with God changed for him, and he just wasn't sure that God could really, could really work things out in his life. And so he started choosing bad friends and, and bad company and uh, started using alcohol and drugs when he was in high school. Things got worse and uh, he uh, had to, you know, he left our home. We had another son to raise, and uh, he graduated, got through high school. We were so grateful uh, for that, and uh, because he was very intelligent, did really well, and um, and uh, but he had just decided that he just was taking a different path at that point. When you're a parent who struggles with a child who has addiction. You just feel powerless. Uh, you you can't fix it. You want so badly to fix it. You want so badly to save them. All your prayers, all your words, um, oftentimes they just fall on deaf ears. Uh, a, fr a friend of mine came alongside me and said, you're grieving. She said, I, I have a friend that I want to come alongside you and just help you through this. And that, that friend was, happened to be a counselor at the Brook. And so she would call me regularly, but she called me one day and she said, Pam, um, can you not take that phone call when Brian calls and he's really high and he's really wasted? Can you not take that phone call? And I said, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know, what, what if he dies? If I don't take that phone call, and he, she said, can you not take that phone call? Can you give yourself permission to not take that phone call? And at that point, I was so codependent, I thought, if I don't take that phone call, maybe I'll, I'll lose him, maybe he'll die, I won't, I won't be able to save him. But I wasn't realizing God had to save him, you know, and I needed to get out of the way. And the next thing she said to me was, so what if he dies, Pam? I couldn't even talk for quite a while. And I just sat silently thinking about what she said. And I said, well, and I think this was a turning point for me, realizing that I couldn't fix Brian and I couldn't save him. And I said, well, I guess I'll just have to trust God to get me through that too. So then uh, one night, um, Brian called us and he was uh, really high and wasted. And he was telling his dad and I, he was thanking us for, for what good parents we had been and that he had really messed things up. And he just really wanted us to know that. And we just said, Brian, where are you? Where are you? Let us come and get you. Where are you? And he just said, I, I don't know. I, I, I'm in a ditch somewhere. But I, I, I just want you to know that I'm, I'm it wasn't you. I messed it up and I'm so grateful to you. So, click, the phone went silent. And uh, 
we, uh, my husband and I went out, just sat around a campfire in the backyard and made a, made a fire. We called the police and we just told them, asked them for their help to try to find him. We kind of knew some of his old haunts, so we told them about that. And they, you know, so they had a place to start. And uh, it was such a nice policeman. And he came back over and about so understanding and just compassionate. He came back over, like, it seemed like within a half hour. And he just said, well, I've got good news for you, and I've got bad news for you. <laughs> and he said, the good news is Brian's alive. Bad news is he's going to jail. And at that time, we were like, well, okay, this, this is an answer to prayer because now he's stopped. He has to do business with the Lord. He has to just, you know, if there was ever a time that he was being stopped, this is it. And so, um, the Lord really did move during that time. So then the day Brian was released from jail, another good friend of ours, sweet friend of ours in our group said, I've got a place for Brian to go when he leaves jail for his rehab. And up until this point, Brian would not go to rehab. There would always be some reason that, that something fell through, you know, many hopes of him going to rehab. He just would bail out or he would just, you know, he would get scared and just back up and, and wouldn't go or something just wouldn't work for the facility to take him. So this was hope that they were willing to take him. They already knew the story and they said that they would. So the day he called me, he said, Mom, I'm ready to, can you come pick me up? And I said, well, really, I can't. I, we're having a big dinner at our house tonight. Your dad might be able to get you in a little bit, but they're waiting for you. Just walk right now over to Jeff Street and check yourself in. So he walked from the jail to Jeff Street at Louisville, at Louisville Rescue Mission and checked himself in. And um, within a month, he really truly surrendered his life to the Lord, called me on the phone and said, Mom, I truly surrendered my life to the Lord. And uh, I just was just shocked. I was just amazed. <laughs> I had been praying for this all this time and I was like, Oh my gosh, it actually happened. I just can hardly believe it, you know, that, and uh, so anyway, uh, I, 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 there were so many people in the story that helped carry that box with us because I wanted to give up so bad. I wanted to give up. I did, I felt like I did give up some days and my husband would say to me, Pam, you can't give up, we can't give up. God is not willing that any should perish. And, and so he had hope for both of us sometimes when I had no hope. And uh, I just really want to encourage people that no matter where you are in your story, you're disillusioned, you're giving up hope. Maybe our story is not tied up with a bow right now. We still have struggles. We're still walking this out and we will until we leave this earth. But if you're still in the middle of that story, I just encourage you not to give up. God is working behind the scenes. Just pray, pray and get out of the Lord's way and try to let him work. And uh, if your story just has been one of grief and you've lost that loved one, I just want to encourage you to just, something Kyle shared years ago was that God will not waste our pain. And I clung to that, no matter what our story, no matter what, it, how it was going to play out. So just try to believe that God will not waste your sorrow and your pain. And He will just somehow bring glory out of your story if you're able to just cling to Him and just lean into him for, for his strength.